and welcome to another edition of Cracking Cryptic, where we're going to look at um, the diabolical Sudoku that appeared in the Daily Telegraph on Friday. Uh, we found over the last few weeks this is a, normally a very, very good puzzle, very challenging puzzle, um, difficult. Um, so without further ado, let's see how we can, we can get on with solving it. Uh, again, what I'm going to be doing is using our the pencil mark method we recommend. So, for example, in this central 3x3 three three box, there's only two positions that a 3 can go in because of this 3 and this 3. That limits the 3s to these two positions and I will enter small digits in 3x3 the, in three three boxes whenever that's the case, whenever I spot it's the case, I should say. <laughs> um, so, you can see we can do the same thing with 2s there. And what we tend to find um, is that this is a nice way of figuring out some early logical steps and getting towards a solution. Sometimes it's not enough, especially on these diabolical puzzles. It, it will almost certainly get you there on a super fiendish puzzle from the times. But these telegraph puzzles are actually uh, cut above. Um, and this is probably about where about where this notation method will take you. Um, now from here, in a speed solving situation, you'd be looking to pick a good point to guess in order to make quick progress. Now where are the candidates to do that? You're, bear in mind when you guess you're always looking to obviously force more than one number so um, you know I wouldn't have thought a good place to guess would be this 7 for example because although it gives you this 7 it's very hard to see how, what it's going to give you beyond that without you having to do a whole load of other work and it's never good to have uh, you know routes through the solution relying on more than one guess um, because that way madness lies. Um, this 4, 6 you might look at. The interaction of the 3, 8 and 9 are interesting up here or even down here. Um, you know obviously if we for example if you pick the one whichever number you pick of these three you're getting another two numbers and that's quite likely to be helpful in terms of forcing solutions but I don't want to do that um, with these videos uh, there's not much interest I think in watching people guess so I want to try and spot something different um, although that's sometimes easier said than done although I can see Right, I'm going to abandon the notation now because I'm going to have to in order to show more logical steps but if we look at this column here we have one and five as the possibles in this cell and this cell. Now if we look at this column we've also got a one and five here so in fact we have a one and a five double in column in, in row one which leaves us with four six eight nine now can we do anything with that? Maybe not immediately. It certainly looks like the, the fives probably are going to be the key to the puzzle. So we've got one five here, one five here, one five here. Be anywhere that can take a five in this. And in fact, five can only go in two positions in the central box here. So, is there a way of eliminating one of those? Ah, yes. Okay, so there is a. I think there is a way of eliminating um, one of these fives from this central 3x3 three three box. Let's just let's think very carefully about this. So we, we can see in column one that there are two positions that a five can go. Now obviously if this position is a five, this position cannot be a five. That, that should be completely clear because uh, this 5 here will just prevent this from being a 5. So we need to ask ourselves the question, well, what happens if this isn't a 5? Now, if this isn't a 5, this will be a 5. But look, that has a profound effect on this box. Um, because we need to look at where we can place 5s in this box. 
And because of this 5, believe it or not, down here, this 5 is preventing from these two cells here from taking a 5. So the consequence of this being a 5 is then profound because it forces there to be a 5 in one of these two positions. And look at that, that's beautiful. That then prevents this from being a 5 again. So either way round, whether this is a 5 or whether this is a 5, this square cannot be a 5. Um, so this is a 5. Let's fill that in. Uh, that means this is a 3. Um, and I imagine that that is going to be extremely useful in terms of cracking the puzzle. So now this has to be a 1, this has to be a 5, and this has to be a 1. Which means this has to be a 1. And yeah, I mean, it, it looks looks to me like um, we've, we've figured out the puzzle from here. Um, maybe just carry on for a couple more seconds, but I don't think there's going to be anything else clever that we have to do. And this has to be a 1 now, this has to be a 7, this has to be a 7. Let's remove this 7 here. has to be a 5, so this is an 8, and this is a three. 3, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're there, um, so, so that was a lovely, lovely piece of logic in the middle of that, I don't think we've looked at anything like that before on the channel, uh, I hope it was clear, um, when I edit the video, I might just try and um, fill the squares in with some colours, so, so it is, a bit more obvious what I was saying. Um, I hope this was uh, interesting and once again thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.